Welcome to Lighthouse Magnifies Emmanuel, a non-profit charity organization to help the needy and shine the light of Emmanuel. <laughs> Welcome to LME Testimonies series. We present to you the entire testimonies of people who became born again Christians by leaving the occult or other religions without cutting their testimonies off as incomplete. The following is a true full testimony from Lyotz Valdivia. I'm from Bolivia, South America. This is my testimony of being trapped in the occult. At the point of wanting to end my life, Jesus came to my rescue, and now I want to tell others, Jesus wants to rescue them too. When I was a very young child around seven years old, I started to read. Instead of reading children's stories, like Cinderella or other classic fairy tales, I started looking and reading witchcraft magazines. They were on the shelves at home. I attended a private Catholic school, and was taught to love Jesus, but for me he was just a figure, not a real or tangible God in my life. My parents were divorced, and I lived with my mother. My mother was a member of several occultist groups and lodges, for 35 years at that time, and our home was a lot different than others. There were strange signs on the doors and windows, and witchcraft materials. I was a very lonely child. No other kids played with me, because my mom forbade them to come to my house. I was too young at that age, to understand why. My mom used to take me to her meetings every afternoon, until night time. I used to see people gathered, wearing robes, and holding black candles and speaking with strange words, calling helping entities and guiding spirits. I was the youngest in the group, I used to feel like a pet. After their ceremonies, everyone in the group was expected to drink some strange beverages, and of course my mom used to take some of those beverages, and gave them to me at home as well. We used to go to cemeteries to pick up bones, for witchcraft purposes. There were special people in charge, of giving us the bones. Sometimes, the group used to drive long distances, to arrive to the top of the mountains, to start the rituals at midnight. When I was eight years old, I was attending meditation courses for children, on Sunday mornings. Teachers were training a group of children. Then when I was a little older, around 10 years old, I was old enough to stay home alone. I was very curious, and used to get witchcraft magazines and books from the shelf, and try to do various experiments with them. I wanted to know if what was written on them was true or not. So I started doing my own experiments, and tests with magic. Nothing happened, for the first few days, but after some time of experimenting, strange phenomenon began to happen around home. Things appearing and disappearing, things broken, without anybody touching them. My mom started blaming and spanking me, for breaking and hiding her things. Then I started having, out-of-body experiences. 
When I started telling this to my mother, she didn't believe me at first. As time passed by, she eventually came to believe I was telling the truth. Then she became proud of me and started teaching and sharing some of her knowledge, teaching me how to obtain my wishes through witchcraft works. There was a new and exciting world just in front of me. I started sharing some of my experiences about the occult with my classmates at school, and they all got very scared. The principal, a nun, came to my classroom to see me and gave me a warning. I almost got expelled from school. All the kids were afraid of talking to me and after that I felt more and more isolated. Because of loneliness, I decided to keep my mouth shut and not mention a thing to anyone except my mother and my meditation teachers. At home, I had all types of cards, tarot cards, and others, and my mom used to read them every night. I thought she was playing, so I used to ask her to teach me those games. She also taught me palm reading. To me, it was like a game. When I became a teenager, I traveled to the United States to study. It was my first experience with a normal family, but as I promised myself, not to say anything to anybody about my previous occult involvement. I kept everything a secret. It was then that I started hearing voices telling me to take my life. At age 18, I went back to my native country and started living by myself in an apartment. These occult powers were even stronger. I knew I was a different kid, but I didn't want to be a different kid. Instead of controlling these forces for my benefit, they started controlling me. I started losing my memory. I had difficulty answering simple questions and had blackouts terrible headaches, hearing voices night and day, and experiencing deep bouts of depression. I couldn't stand the torment. I didn't want to live anymore. I was not going to do anything spectacular to finish it. I simply decided to stop eating until I died. I locked myself in my apartment and stopped eating for six days. I became very weak. Before dying, I decided to take a final walk around the city to say goodbye to the city, to the streets, to life. I walked for a while and then sat on a bench. I bought a newspaper. In the newspaper, I read an advertisement that asked, Do you have problems, and need a friend to talk to? I was very surprised by this ad. I had never seen anything like that in a newspaper, so I decided to go to the address, given in the ad. I wasn't going for help, because I was not going to change my decision but simply have someone to listen to me. I went to this place, and it looked like a Catholic place, because I saw the sign Jesus, decorating a pulpit in the room. I thought it was a priest's house, or a nun's house, at first. Then I looked around, and I saw a group of teenagers talking. Something different about them caught my attention, and that something different 
was like a spark of life inside me. I had never seen such exuberance for life in young people. I watched and listened to their every word for nearly two hours, spellbound. I wanted so much to have joy and peace and excitement for life like they had. I was about to leave, but then a pastor began talking to me. This man started talking about Jesus Christ. I found this was a Christian home. I listened to him. After that, he told me to give Jesus a chance to change my life. I challenged this Jesus right there to change my life and the pastor said he is willing to accept the challenge so I prayed with the pastor. I asked Jesus to change my miserable life. Then I returned home. While I was in my room, making my bed that afternoon, I started feeling a presence, filling the room. A presence of peace and love, like I have never felt before. So I asked aloud, is that you, the God that Pastor told me about? After asking that, the presence became overwhelming to me. I sat there for hours, enjoying this presence. I didn't want to go to sleep. I didn't want that presence to leave me, so I stayed awake all night, until early in the morning, and then I finally fell asleep. When I woke up, God's presence was still there. He was right there with me, like protecting me. After that, I started feeling so much hunger and thirst to get to know more about this God. The next morning, I dressed quickly and went to look for that pastor. He talked to me for many hours in his office. Then he started teaching me about this Jesus every day for three weeks. Then he invited me to join a church. I watched this pastor closely. When he was praying in their meetings, I observed that there was power in his prayers. But this power, it was not the power I had known for years. This was a stronger power, it was a power combined with love. I was amazed. Shortly after that, I went visiting my mother, and told her about my new life with Jesus. She got extremely angry with me. She then told me that I could not become a Christian, because, since I was little, she had dedicated me to the Lodge. Then I yelled at her and told her, I didn't belong to any group. I belong to Jesus. She became even more furious, and told me terrible things were going to happen to me, if I continued with that position. I said, I don't care, I am not alone. I am with Jesus. I left her house immediately after that. End of part 1 Please see video part 2 of ex-occultist Laudes Valdivia's testimony on LME channel.